Hello world! In today's video, we are going to understand how a processor stores multi-byte data in memory. For that, let's consider a linear model of the memory. Here, the lowest address is on the top and subsequent higher addresses are added one below the other. This is as per the usual convention. Now, each location in the memory can hold 8 bits or 1 byte of data. So, if your data is of 1 byte only, then it can be stored in any location and retrieved easily for future access. There is no confusion about this. However, consider this example of multi-byte data. So, how should we order the bytes in this case such that we are able to retrieve the number correctly every single time as required? First of all, each digit in this number occupies 4 bits or 1 nibble. Thus, 2 digits form a byte. Here, 1 2 is the most significant byte or MSB and 7 8 is the least significant byte or LSB. Now, if we store, that is the processor stores, the MSB or the big end of the data in the first or the lowest address of the memory, then such a byte order is known as big endian. Conversely, if we store the LSB or the little end first, then it is referred to as little endian byte order. Thus, processors can either be big endian or little endian in the architecture. Now, we don't come across these words, that is big endian and little endian, in our usual day-to-day -day communication. So, we'll have a look at a brief history on how these terms found their way in the world of computing. But that'll be covered in a while, so continue watching the video until the end. And now, let's have a quick look at some of the advantages associated with Big Endian Byte Order. Big Endian was or is used in early mainframe computers made by IBM. It is also used in Motorola 68K and in PowerPC, and basically most of the RISC processors are Big Endian. And by the way, I have explained the differences between RISC and CISC processors in a separate video on this channel, and the link to that is in the description below. So ensure that you've checked that one out as well. All right, coming back to this one. One of the most obvious advantage of Big Endian is that it is also the natural way in which we write things. We write the MSB of any given number first on the left hand side and LSB in the end on the right hand side. So if you ever look at the hex dump of a computer, then it would be easier to decipher the data which is represented in big endian order. Also, the moment you access the MSB first, you get a rough estimate of the number. For example, if the number is say 5050, the MSB makes it clear that the number is approximately 5000. Deciphering the sign of an integer also becomes simpler with big endian as sign bit is the first bit in the most significant byte. Little endian also has its own set of advantages and that is the reason why it is used in Intel processors like x86 in AMD, which means most of our personal computers use little endian. This byte order is preferred due to the ease that it provides in certain operations. For example, on paper, addition and subtraction is usually done by considering the LSP or the value at the right hand side first. This is done so that we can add the carry, which is generated by the addition of rightmost digits, to the left side digits. Now in case of little endian system, the processor fetches the first 8 bits, which is nothing but LSB, and adds it to the first byte, LSB again, of another number. While this addition is in progress, the processor simultaneously fetches another byte, which is the preceding one. So this parallelism or pipelining results in faster operation speeds. In case of big endian system, the processor may have to fetch the bytes in reverse order, which can make the operation time consuming. Now consider a number which is stored using 32 bits. And say you are interested in accessing just the non-zero part. In this case, it'll be nothing but the LSB of the number. So, this operation can be done quickly in a little endian processor as LSB is the first byte. So that's another advantage of using little endian. Usually as a high level language programmer, you need not be concerned about the endianness 
as you are rarely exposed to it. And it all works fine as long as the electronics underneath is consistent, which means the same order is followed throughout. However, you'll need to be mindful of endedness when you want to say transfer data between two or more systems because they may or may not be using the same endedness. Thus, in order to maintain consistency, there'll be a need to add a layer of software which converts from one type of endedness to another. Basically, for communication purposes, you'll need to perform swapping of bytes. I remember transferring data between a microcontroller and a Bluetooth low energy device. So most of the Bluetooth low energy firmware utilizes little end in byte order. Thus, if I had to say transfer 1, 2, 3, 4 as a value of characteristic, then in terms of little end in, I had to transfer 3, 4, 1, 2. So obviously, you'll have to write a small function which does the job for you. Now, in case of internet, which is a vast network of computers, big endian byte order is used as a standard. Thus, big endian is often known as network byte order as well. So, on the internet, whenever a little endian computer passes the data over the network, it converts it into network byte order. And while receiving it, it converts the data back to its own native representation. Also, you need to be familiar with the endedness while developing and debugging hardware and low-level firmware. Even different file types use different endedness. Thus, in case of mismatch of byte order of the machine and the file type, the application which is used to view the file must reverse the byte order as per the one that is used in the system. I feel life would have been much easier if there was only one universally accepted way of storing the bytes, that is either big endian or little endian. It would have saved us from a lot of unnecessary and time-consuming complications, and we would have got one less thing to study. But semiconductor companies chose the endianness arbitrarily, and till date they follow the same byte order to maintain backward compatibility. Thus, it is unlikely that we'll ever have a standard way of doing things. The only thing that we can provide, say if we are dealing with endedness related tasks, are consistency in our designs and clear documentation to avoid any confusion. Now, before I wind up this video, let's look at the origin of both these words, that is Little Endian and Big Endian. They were first used by Jonathan Swift in his novel titled Gulliver's Travels. Here, a political group that broke their boiled eggs at the big end were known as Big Endians, and they rebelled against a Lilliputian king who made his subjects break their eggs at the little end. And thus, obviously, they were known as Little Endians. Completely meaningless squabble. But from there, these words found their way in an article titled On Holy Wars and a Plea for Peace, which was written by computer scientist Danny Cohen in 1980. And that's how these terms were introduced in the world of computer architecture. So that's it for today. I hope you found the video useful. And if you did, then do drop a like, share the video, and obviously hit the subscribe button for more such amazing content. And with that said, I'll see you in the next one. Bye world!